Tom wants his sisters to meet local gallery owner Stephen Harrison Lord to see if he can shed any more light on the work of Jack Cadworth and whether he might even make the girls an offer. I believe he was uh, born in the Leeds area. This, this bottom painting is painted in Kirkstall Abbey in Leeds, which is where Jack Cudworth was born, and uh, uh, obviously showed a lot of early talent, because uh, this is a very competent painting, and he's only 15 at this point, so it just shows um, what, what a talented chap he was, because he's doing this as a young man mm -hmm. uh, before he went off to college in Leeds to study art. On this one, uh, later in life, and actually this one I would think is very much inspired by um, Monet, uh, he painted a, a series of pictures uh, on the Thames in London when he came over to see his friend Pizarro and he's done this, this, this rising sun is very similar to a very famous Monet painting so I think it was clearly inspired by that. Roughly how many have you got of these? About 109. 109? <laughs> Jack Cudworth actually, although he was born in Leeds, went to work in Ireland for many years and he became a member of the RHA, the Royal Hibernian Academy. So that's the equivalent of the Royal Academy in Ireland and exhibited over there. And I believe he's also exhibited in the Royal Academy over here and the Scottish Academy. So he's gone all around the country, clearly a very highly respected artist. Christine and Joe's dad certainly champion Jack Cudworth, but it's always difficult to know which artists are going to rock it in value. If you're interested in collecting art, you should keep an eye out for those who have a consistent, recognisable style or are starting to get a name in the art world and had work exhibited in one of the London galleries. Who knows, you might even discover the next David Hockney, one of the most influential artists of the 20th century and a Yorkshire lad too. Well, Hockney was born just up the road five miles away and he's Britain's um, most favourite artist. Some of his work goes up for £7 million. So, if only you had a hundred of those, yes. you'd be a bit well in, wouldn't <laughs> you? That, wouldn't yeah, it? if only half of us got chatting up yeah, Hockney, we'd, right. <laughs> we'd, we'd have been out tonight, wouldn't we? We, we would, certainly definitely. Would. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, um, there, but there are quite a number of uh, local artists that have gone up, up in value an awful lot. We have in, in Brighouse, which, where I am, uh, Peter Brook is a very well-respected uh, artist. He's in the Tate Gallery in London. Mm -hmm. And we used to sell his works ten years ago and for three, four hundred pounds. Now we're selling the same work for five thousand mm pounds. -hmm. So it's, it's worth looking around galleries and, and catching a rising market on, mm -hmm. on a good artist. Well, Stephen, that leads me to the question, are you interested in buying these? Well, it's a good question, but I'm afraid not. However, it's only because I'm not, this is not quite my style of work. It's a bit too traditional for my, uh, my shop. But um, I've done a little bit of research and uh, Jack Cudworths are regularly sold through auction. And um, uh, lesser paintings might go for one or two hundred pounds, uh, but the highest value I've seen is two thousand pounds. And it consistently hits the five hundred to a thousand pound market. So I think you said you've got 145 of these, was it? 109. 109 of those. <laughs> yes. So if we mark that up by, uh, you know, between 100 and 2,000 pounds, there could be quite a, quite a little stash of uh, value there. We've had some good advice today, so maybe rethink and have a good look through the pictures and then decide what goes and what doesn't. Mm -hmm.